Okay, I don't know about you, but all of this zooming is giving me seat rash. So let's get up and go outside. Ah, this is more like it. It's another gorgeous day. So clean and refreshing and healthy. Or is it? Well, personalized and hyperlocal air quality monitoring can supplement regional air quality monitoring to help you know. But to get traction, you have to be as good at telling people about it in effective ways as you are just geeking out on the data that comes rolling in on your backyard or clip-on monitor. It's true that most people want to live healthier lives. Just scroll through Instagram. You're going to see, you know, exercise routines and recipes using whole foods, mindfulness practices, smoothie concoctions, Peloton challenges, all sorts of stuff. And social media is really the perfect place to talk about air quality. Back when I was in charge of a huge regional air quality monitoring and public education program for the Sacramento Metropolitan Air Quality Management District, we used TV and radio commercials and we used print and billboards and all sorts of different methods to reach out and communicate air quality for the Spare the Air public education and outreach program in the Sacramento region where we have close to 2 million population. We worked with our contractors to launch the Air Alert text notification opt-in service, which let you know when air quality was unhealthy. We got the air quality forecast on TV weathercast, where it quickly became a staple element of TV and radio weather reporting. And we even came up with an interactive CD-ROM software game called Save Planet Paluto. <laughs> CD-ROMs, how quaint. Now we've got every manner of internet and wireless technology available to us to communicate air quality. But the problem remains, how do you translate geeky tech data into something that the public is going to care about? It's a challenge for sure. The keys to good health communication are accuracy, making sure the information you're trying to communicate, in this case, air quality readings, is accurate, reliable, and understandable. Credible delivery. In this case, I'm talking about a face, a human, a real person who is authentic and relatable. This can have a big impact on your message. Availability. The messaging must be delivered to locations where the people that you want to reach hang out. And these days that's online and in apps. We need to be able to use new technology in different ways to reach different audiences. Social media. There are so many platforms out there and you can use most of them to spread the message about personal monitoring. You need to ask who is your target and where do they hang out? For example, how about new moms who want to do everything possible to raise a healthy baby. Lots and lots of groups for that. Do you think they'd be interested in maybe having an air monitor or knowing the readings? Well, heck yes. Where do they hang out? Maybe it's on Pinterest where you can be really successful pinning information and resources that people are going to care about and take action on. Maybe it's in a mom's group on Instagram where you can join into the conversation at the right time, assuming you're a mom, in the right way and talk about home-based air quality monitors. Or maybe it's on TikTok where you can create engaging short videos about whatever the topic is. And that leads me to video. Video is truly the best way to make a human connection online outside of being somewhere in person. Now, one of the most powerful tools at the moment is Instagram Reels. You can make videos of up to 30 seconds to get your point across in a creative and engaging way. Instagram pumps reels into the algorithm, so it's the most effective way to reach people on Instagram right now. The example from Virginia Kerr that I'm going to show you isn't about air monitoring. It's about creating engaging videos, but it makes the point. It shows how effective short form content can be at teaching a topic and key communications points. How to wear a microphone. Don't wear it with the cord hanging out. String it up your shirt. Put a loop in it so it doesn't have pull. And attach it within six inches of your mouth. Just make sure it's not near jewelry or hair. We can hear that and that's annoying. Let's see one more. 
I don't think there's anything for me to say on video that someone in my industry hasn't already said. Other people build diesel trucks, but they don't make them like I make them. Mary's saying it's not just about what you say on video, it's how you explain it. The feeling the person has when they watch your video, the connection. If it's there, you're gonna stand out. You won't ever want to go to another diesel mechanic. Oh. So with a little creativity, you can see how you can communicate valuable information in 30 seconds or less. Now your smartphone is really your best video tool because you can easily create content. I personally believe that video is the most powerful tool you can use and that everyone needs to get good at using it. You have an entire TV studio in your pocket that allows you to get your messaging out in a compelling way to the world. You can go live on Instagram, on Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, many other places. Or you can do what I'm doing right now, shoot and edit a video on a smartphone. Just make sure that you use a plug-in smartphone mic so you can have great audio and get a smartphone mount for your tripod. The thing about video is that it makes a human connection faster than just about anything short of being in person with somebody. When people see you on video regularly talking about air monitoring or whatever the topic, they come to know, like, and trust you. And the most powerful way to use video is by storytelling. We had a truck earlier, or a trailer earlier, full of donations, and we decided that we wanted to drive around and um, find police officers and firemen, PG&E, even civilians, and um, pass around warm Chick-fil-A sandwiches, because we figured a lot of people that haven't had a warm meal, and we have cold waters, so we just wanted to help the community out. Everybody loves a good story. And when you can authentically tell the story about how air quality affects you, your family, your neighborhood, your region, it can have a really big impact. Another great form of communication is podcasting. It's a fast growing way to communicate and can help you build an audience of like-minded people who just love you and love the topic. A podcast exploring all of the ramifications of air quality and health could be used to discuss personal air monitoring devices and benefits. One easy way to record a podcast is just to launch a Zoom meeting and record the audio. Or have live guests in studio. You can use a podcasting console like this one right here that is a built-in recorder. It's got four ports for microphones, four headphone ports, and big buttons to launch music, sound effects, sponsor breaks, whatever. You can also connect two cell phones to bring in your guests. Speaking of podcasts, social audio got a huge boost during the pandemic with the debut of the Clubhouse app. Have you heard of it? Are you on it? It's audio only live streaming and you can create and host a discussion room on any topic. Create a club and members will be notified when you start a discussion and you can have multiple moderators on stage at the same time. Q&A with audience members is the best part when you bring them up to the stage. Social audio is so big that Facebook and Twitter are getting involved by creating their own audio only platforms. Another area of opportunity is during emergencies. For example, here in California, you know, we are plagued by wildfires. I served in the city of Santa Rosa Emergency Operations Center during the historic Sonoma County wildfires turning every possible news release item into a live stream or recorded video product for instant release on Facebook and Twitter. The area was inundated with smoke and the situation was just awful with massive evacuations and destruction of entire neighborhoods. Now imagine how citizen-owned air monitors reporting particulate levels from all over the city could help the public and public officials understand the pervasiveness and the health impact of wildfire smoke and fine particle pollution. The key is to make the public aware of what's possible, what's out there, what's actually happening with this new age of personal air monitors that are readily available and how the data that's generated can impact their lives. Now, I am not a scientist, I'm not a data expert, but I do know one thing and that is we have the most incredible communications technology 
available to us to reach and involve the public in air quality issues. My message to you today is don't just keep it to yourself. Figure out every way possible to use the available tools from Instagram stories to YouTube to Twitter Live to Clubhouse to podcasting to take the air quality monitoring message from your house, your backyard, and community out to the world. Thank you.